Hey guys, today I'm going to show you some of the vertical systems that I use here in this narrow garden so that you can see how much food you can actually grow in a small space. I'm going to start off showing you the vertical systems that would allow you to grow the least amount of food to the most amount of food, the pros and cons about each one and how to set it up. Also a little bit about um, the plants that are growing in these systems. The first one is very simple. I love this concept. It's basically like a sewn bag, like a grow bag style. And um, they have different tiers. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven stories that I can plant. For small plants, I can do like two per tier or I can just do one. I think it would be really cool to grow. I have different varieties of mint and you know how mint can be invasive. It'd be cool to grow like different mint on each level. What I really love about this is that you can hang it really easily. It has like these two loops that you can hang on even on a fence or like on the wall. I have it on this conduit uh, structure that I made a, a few years back. The best thing about this kind of system is that it's basically a floating planter. It doesn't take up any uh, part of your floor space, which is really great for narrow places because uh, sometimes you just want to free up that bottom space. You can hang on a shade side or a full sun side. Um, these things drain out really quickly though because they are like grow bags. It's kind of like fabric. So what I did was I added more vermiculite this time to not just improve drainage, but to uh, help to retain more moisture. And then definitely I would add mulch on top if I'm growing it on the sunny side. I have right now some red onions, uh, violas, and um, cilantro growing here. You can see cilantros are like going to seed right now. Uh, cilantro grows really well in this space. I love that I can have this hung you know on the top part and then on the bottom i can also grow another plant so that's the really cool thing about these kind of hanging planters is that you can put you know more along like entire row like entire wall this part i have sort of an intricate irrigation setup <laughs> I have like one per tier. It's not really necessary. I just kind of went all out because I was excited about making <laughs> um, very like specific irrigations. Um, but yeah, I have one per tier and then these emitters, I can adjust them, uh, you know, to allow how much water I want. And then all the way to the bottom actually gets the most water. And then this, this one has a, like a, a little plastic kind of a material to catch the water so it wouldn't drip down like crazy but if it does overflow i have another plant on the bottom this is a rock samphire one of my favorite herbs uh yeah and that one is really hardy doesn't mind too much water or too little water so i have that catching the excess water mm, and then i got mint growing in this bottom one this is chocolate mint but i have mint growing here because mint is also not very picky about how much water it needs i have grown like bacoba in here as well and you know bacoba is a really water loving plant so it's just like perfect for this uh, bottom tier I had to step away from that planter because my neighbor started blasting music. Uh, yeah, so these planters are pretty inexpensive and you can buy a lot of styles similar to that online. And uh, you can even probably make your own if you can sew or buy fabric or you can even cut up something like a more durable bag and make something like that quite easily. But that one's actually going on, I think like at least two and a half years and is still uh, working really well. Here's the next planter. It's the pop-up garden that I've installed recently. You can see how many plants you can grow in this space. Uh, you can do either one to two plants at the most, I'd say, per planter. So that's uh, two, you know, four, six, eight plants, and then one, actually 10, because one on the bottom if you want to grow something. And then on the top, you can have an option of growing something really big in a vertical system, which I don't usually see in these kind of like, upwards growing designs. Someone even suggested to grow a zucchini on top, which I think is a really great idea. 
everything is growing really well here. What I like about this setup is that it's really super easy to uh, put together and then you can swap out plants very easily anytime you want, even moving the you know entire planter out and uh, setting it somewhere else. And then on the bottom, I actually have a tomato growing. It was going, it was doing really well until it got long enough and it wants to go get light. Once it reaches light, it's gonna grow really beautifully. But as you see, I got another planter there so it's blocked out. I might remove that planter so the tomato can have more space to grow. Beautiful pineapple mint growing here. And uh, yeah, and these living ground covers that are edible, literally just stuff these cuttings in, like going on their, their full two weeks and now they're already like more than doubled in size. And then for watering, I do have to water each one of them manually right now. Uh, there is a tray that catches water on the bottom, but the tray is actually pretty difficult to remove later on. I realize that. In this system, I could grow one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. <laughs> really? Actually never counted this. <laughs> this small little tower that takes up just about oh, one square feet can grow you 12 plants. This type of setup will not allow you to rotate the tower just like the other uh, vertical planters that I'll show you in just a bit. So this means I have to consider the type of plants that can go in here uh, depending on each level because each level will get a different amount of light. The top part would get more light and then you know gradually getting the least amount of light in the uh, lower to the ground especially because mine is placed against this side of the wall which is more like the more part shade or some parts even get exposed to just full shade on this side of the garden so ideally in a tower or a system that cannot rotate you'd want to put it in a full sun space so that everything gets even lighting uh, i can't find anywhere that would make sense to put this on the full sun side right now so this is where it has to go and the way I'm working with this is that I'm placing things that require more light to go on top like things that are flowering or fruiting so I had a short small um, dahlia on the top last year and then I have strawberries growing on the top part because strawberries love full sun. So I got the strawberries growing up here, the pine berry, um, French sorrel, and then to the Swiss chards, the chards I grew in the winter. So it's starting to bolt right now. And then on the bottom here, I got this uh, magenta leaf plant. Actually, this one makes a really great house plant. That's why it's perfect to go uh, more in the lower part of the tower. This thing, I love using it for making like a natural uh, purple or magenta color for like as a food coloring. And then the way on the lower tier, I haven't figured out what to put in there yet, but I'm thinking maybe something like a, a Japanese green because most, a lot of Japanese greens don't require that much light so I might put in like a um, a Japanese mugwort or something it's a really delicate vegetable it's pretty compact it can kind of cascade and it does really well in the shade or if you want to attract some hummingbirds you can put some fuchsias on here some fuchsias don't require that much space and they grow well in containers that might be good if you have a tower that doesn't rotate and it's in more like in the shade this tower is made with a six inch diameter PVC pipe. And in the US, we can easily pick up uh, PVCs at our local hardware stores like Home Depot or Lowe's. I think these type of pipes like this size run pretty expensive now, unless you get the shorter ones, which I use for like a worm tower. And um, that one, I think it's only two feet long. This one is, I think it's about like four feet and things like that start to I guess get the cost up but all you do is basically drill holes on here but I would not drill holes too close together I think this is probably a perfect amount of um, spacing between the more holes you drill obviously there's more planting space but that would also shade off and get the plants too crowded too far apart would be good if you're growing plants that like more space to grow um, but yeah it, it's um it's a great little 
thing that fits, you know, 12 plants in this thing and it's just in like a one square feet. Uh, the holes are pretty big here, so it gives you easier access with your hands and try to get some of the soil out to plant in. But that does mean that the soil can come out easily. So what I do is I use, uh, I love using lamb's ear, these fuzzy leaves for a lot of things. Um, yeah, so one thing I do is I use those to wrap around the plants before I stuff it in so that it would prevent the soil to fall out. If you don't have that, you can use some other leaves that that are more flexible or just use, you know, compostable like paper towels or, or um, like stuffing paper that are compostable. To water this is super simple. I just water from the top and then the water will just, you know, trickle down the bottom. And um, the bottom, even if it doesn't get as much water, it's okay too, because it's getting less light being in this space. And to mount this, you can either drill a hole on the back side of the top and mount it to the wall, or you can put a strap and kind of like put a belt to strap it against the wall. Or the way I do it is I, I actually have a, like a T-post uh, pounded into the ground and then I, I put the tower over it. So I actually, I think I might have a video clip on that. I'll, I'll link you guys to it down below, see how I set the system up. So these things were placed in the baggies because I was preventing critters from getting my strawberries. Let's take one. Doo, doo, doo. Okay, let's go to the next one. Here is Mr. Stacky, and I call this my strawberry tower. This set I purchased it on Amazon. It comes in a set of five tiers. They do have them in like the smaller size, but this one I believe is like a 64 quart or something. So it's the larger containers. Each tier allows you to grow four plants, and I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, seven stacks so that's 28 plants here i got one set i liked it so much and actually saw someone um, let go of their used one so i picked that one up as well now i got two of these and i basically got three stacking somewhere else and then i have seven here i think seven is probably the safest um tiers you can uh stack up otherwise you would have to kind of melt it uh, you know in the ground or something to really stabilize it um but yeah this is the whopper strawberry and oh oh and this one is the kind that rotates but this one does oh i got a cape gooseberry that just dropped because i was trying to turn this so this thing used to be easier to turn but over winter some of my um uh, i love these cape uh gooseberries by the way they grow really well in containers and they're more or less a perennial out here in zone 10. So uh, some of the, the, the fruits that dropped I didn't get to have sprouted all over this, um, this tower. So it's actually kind of going crazy as you can see. It makes it difficult to turn this right now, but as soon as I kind of cut this back, I'll be able to spin this thing. So you can see it doesn't spin too well. This thing, it is super easy to put together they stack on top of each other it has a really wide opening so whenever i want to replace a plant it is easy for me to just put my hand in and swap the plant out and to water this just water the top tier and the second tier and that would allow the the, the top tier to drip down to the second one and so on sometimes though if certain ones need a little extra watering i will go in to kind of uh, water that specific area this one here is a red alpine and um, okay, got it. Thank you, plant. I got some different types of strawberries and some that's got these really pink flowers. The pink flowering ones actually are quite sweet of berries. Strawberry is just something really great to grow in small spaces. You can see small fruits and uh, grows really well in containers. They do like full sun though. The more sun you give it, the sweeter the berries would get. So we're going to compare this one with this little fruit right here uh, from the Whopper. So same variety of strawberries, one grown in full sun, one growing in part sun. We'll see how both of them will taste. I am dying to try a strawberry. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, let's try this big one first. It's very meaty and firm, just like a store-bought strawberry. Um, 
I grow a different varieties here. I kind of want to feel like I'm eating a fruit sometimes. So uh, that's why I chose to get the Whopper variety. Let's try that too. Thank you. Mm. This one's like way sweeter than the other one. Here's a little red alpine. Strong flavored, but not very sweet yet. We've been getting a lot of rain, kind of washes out the flavors and hasn't been warm enough for the, the berries to sweeten up. So something I don't like about this system is that the once those roots grow through, sometimes you have roots that would grow deeper and then it would like touch the second tier. So if you want to separate them, it does get a little difficult. Uh, you might end up injuring the plants a little bit. They'll go into shock because you're pulling up the roots from the second tier if you remove those tiers. Uh, but you, I hardly ever do that unless I decide to say like, to literally pick this up and move it elsewhere. But if you put them on wheels, you can also push it. My problem is that it's not the easiest to push on wheels because my um, ground, I did it myself. So. <laughs> it's pretty bumpy. Uh, have to be more careful when you're pushing like tall, tall stuff. The thing that's really versatile about this, uh, the Mr. Stacky, is that you can grow this in a more hydroponic setting. So this is a three-quarter inch uh, PVC pipe. It goes right through all the way to the bottom of this tier. And um, this is sort of something that helps to stabilize a little bit. You don't need it at all, actually, but I thought it would... I don't know, somehow be helpful because I got five, no, I got seven tiers here. Um, the package comes with five tiers. <laughs> so yeah, this is a bit taller than how many they recommend, but there are people that would stack up to seven or even 10, as long as you do melt it deep in the ground to stabilize it. I'm not doing, I'm not stabilizing into the ground. That's why I'm just gonna put seven tiers max. Uh, for safety reasons. <laughs> if you want to have, say, like a farm of these, you can set up and pound like a, a rebar, you know, into the ground, and then you can stabilize these and, and have, grow a bunch of them like a farm. So this design does offer more versatility. Uh, once I move this, I'm going to have a much better setup so the water would drain out very easily. But yeah, you can see it just takes a one, two, three, four of these um, uh, pavers. Uh, and that would give it enough space for the strawberries or more compact plants to grow outwards. So this actually does really well um, for like growing beets or small little like short carrots and um, salads, of course, and herbs, uh, lots of variety of things, um, lots of options, really. No, the fruit's eaten. Oh. This happens so often. Whenever I wait for that perfect day to pick the perfectly ripe fruits, it's gone. So here is the rest of Mr. Stacky. This one is much easier to rotate. And I got this uh, drain away drain tray, I think it's called. This thing was sent by the company a while ago and I've been loving using it. The only thing I wish it had was that it can rotate because uh, right now it's sitting on a double thing. I got the, uh, the spinning Lazy Susan thing that makes this unique is that it has this part you can screw on this PVC pipe for drainage. So I pretty much just keep it up like this and I'll wait to collect enough water and then I just turn it down this way and dunk the water out to uh, water the garden. Here's what I'm thinking. I could have the other seven tiers and move them all right here so that I can put the irrigations through. Already got the, you know, the tubings up there and I just need to uh, trace it down one, two, three and uh, get all of Mr. Stacky's watered that way. This last one I want to show you here is the Green Stock Vertigo Garden. This thing holds the most amount of plants that I've come across. It holds um, six on one tier and there are seven tiers here. So there's 42 plants you can stuff in this thing that sits on like a four square feet. It's crazy, I know. <laughs> uh, so I obviously love that. I think if you're trying to max out the space by st putting growing a lot of food, this has got to be it. Um, but it does take up the most 
uh, I think, space out of all the planters I mentioned. And it is a bit heavier to, um, uh, to install. You might need help if you can't do it yourself because after you fill up the soil and move them to stack them together, the stacking part is really easy, but it's about the weight of it all because it takes quite a bit of soil to fill each planter. It is a bit wider than Mr. Stacky, but it is still sitting on a four square space. Uh, the plants here can, you know, depends on what you grow, but sometimes those plants can uh, get a little bigger. And so I do have to move the, uh, the green stock out a little bit away from the wall. Otherwise the plants get like shoved against the wall as I move this thing. But yeah, you can see this is like, you can rotate it. So for vertical tower, especially if you want to grow more like like food, you'd want to put it somewhere in like full sun so you have more options of what you want to grow. And for me in full sun means it's against the wall here. So it's not it's not really like where the the plants would get sun from all four sides. In that case, I have to kind of think about the lighting of where I plant stuff. Um, Obviously, with the lowest tier getting the least amount of light to the ones on top getting the most light. So I have, again, more f like heavy flowering plants and, and strawberries on the top and then to a little bit more herbs or maybe like a mint um, and different types of lower light kind of um, plants on the bottom. Got some pretty diverse plants in here. Milkweed for the butterflies and beneficial insects edible flowers to little peppers and going to add some basil once they get to a decent size I'm gonna put those in uh, lots of strawberries <laughs> I love my strawberries there are still quite a bit of space for me to fill I just haven't decided what to plant and then on the bottom because it doesn't get that much Sun right now it does but in the winter it gets like it's like in the deep shade <laughs> so um, yeah this is chocolate mint this is for some reason this one has a more strong chocolate smell than um, than mint, so I really like this one. Probably would do more propagations and get them growing faster on the lower tier. During mid-season, you want to change out the plants. It is a bit difficult because the space is quite tight to uh, remove and replace plants. Uh, most people would just take the whole tower down and plant it. They are really easy to stack, but like I said, it can get pretty heavy. So I think it's a two person job. The hardest part I find is that if I want to remove one tier and the rest of stuff are still growing, you kind of have to push those plants aside to um, be careful not to smash them as you, uh, you know, put that top tier back on. Watering is pretty efficient for me. It's about two gallons of water, um, maybe twice a week. It depends on how hot it gets, but it goes into this water reservoir from the top and then it would water everything in here. So either with a bucket or a, um, a, a watering hose. They now actually came up with this watering system uh, that you can purchase, uh, you know, separately from, from the planter and it would do like, you can tap into it to like a timer and let it do automatic watering, which, um, but the only thing with that is I think because of the clip on for the, the irrigation, you won't be able to uh, rotate this, uh, this planter. So instead, I think for me is uh, eventually I would set up irrigation on the top and just let it, let the tube feed directly to the you know from the top down and then the bottom i love this space specially designed for this system so it sits right down here perfectly it rotates and it has a drain hole so you just plug this tube and um, let the excess water drain out they also make a trellis that kind of clips on to each tier and uh, it comes out pretty far though so it doesn't really work out for me because i like uh, keeping a decent amount of space on the walkway open. What I did is just use these sort of Velcro things to hold the plants back. Like this one, I just kind of have the clip on like this to hold the milkweed in. With all that said, this is still my favorite vertical garden because I just love packing as much as I can in a small space. I especially love these sweet alisum as I'm speaking. There's a little butterfly, hi. Oh, really smells like honey and they're just so so magical in this planter cascading 
But yeah, if you guys are interested in picking up one of these, I have a, a, a promo code for you. Um, the best time to get it is around the holidays, whenever they're running a sale. Well, I hope you had enjoyed this vertical garden tour. Thank you so much for making this part in the video. For plants and seeds, don't forget to check out my shop. I'll put a link below. And um, like and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more content like this. I'll see you right back here soon. Happy gardening!